The first notice you get varies depending upon what kind of lease you have. You can get either a 5, 14, or 28, or 30 day notice. And all of them mean a little bit something different. Most typically a tenant ends up with a five day notice and the notice says that there's five days to fix the problem or move out. Sometimes it's called a pay or quit notice and sometimes it says you have five days to, to fix the problem or cure the problem. Um, that language can sometimes be confusing. The important thing is that you have five days before the landlord can do anything. Quite often we see landlords give out five day notices just in hopes that there's some way that the problem can get resolved. They don't actually want to remove the tenant from the unit they just want the problem to be fixed. If you get a, a lease violation that says you are behind on your rent and you have to pay $500 as an example, usually what we recommend is you contact the landlord immediately, find out if you can set up some sort of a payment plan if you can't pay within the five days and have really good, open, clear communication with the landlord. One important thing to note when, when talking about a five day notice, the way you count five days is not um, kind of typical. Normally what you do is you don't count the very first day that, that a notice is given. So if it's given on a Monday, you don't count Monday, but you count Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, and you skip the weekends. So a five-day notice actually ends up being a seven-day notice. So if they give you five days to pay your rent, that usually means you have an entire week to pay your rent. If Monday happens to be Labor Day or another holiday, then that means you get until the following Tuesday. So five days may sound like a short time period, but typically um, because of weekends, it'll, there'll be a few more days added to that that you actually have to fix the problem. And again, you have to fix the problem or take substantial steps to fix the problem. So talking to the landlord immediately, letting them know that you're trying to fix the problem may prevent them from going to court. There are some other notices you might get that are not quite the same. Um, if you had some sort of law enforcement um, interaction, if you were contacted by the police or the sheriff's department because of selling drugs or manufacturing drugs or delivering drugs, those types of things could mean that you could get a five day notice without a right to cure, saying that you have to move out of the apartment immediately. But those are only effective if the law enforcement agency gives a letter to the landlord stating that you have created a nuisance on the property. So if someone's smoking pot in the apartment, they can't do anything about that. That's not a five day notice without a right to cure. They could give you a five day notice because you're violating the lease, but they can't say you have to be out and you have no option to cure it. The other type of notice that you might get is a 14-day notice. 14-day notices are usually when there's been more than one violation of the lease. Um, there's two types of violations that you can have. One violation would be if you're behind on rent. The other would be because you violated some provision in the lease. So if you got a cat and you're not supposed to have a cat in your apartment, that would be a violation. Um, usually what happens is the first time you, you violate one of those behavior rules, you get a five day notice that says you can't have a cat. The next time you violate a rule, maybe you have a loud party, the landlord, if they wanted to, could give you a 14 day notice without a right to cure, and you really wouldn't have any grounds to fight that unless the facts were not true. So the landlord always has that option the second time that you violate it in either the non-rent category or the rent category. So the first time you're behind on rent, the landlord says gives you a five day notice, you fix it, the second time you're behind on the rent, if the landlord wanted to, they could give you a 14-day notice. That's not typically what happens. Typically, they just continue to give the five-day notice, and as long as you work with them and try to fix the problem, they're going to continue to work with you. Um, and each individual landlord is very different, um, so get to know your landlords. Uh, and again, clear communication with the landlords to find out what's going on um, and make sure that, that you're you know, doing your best in good faith to follow the lease provisions is really going to help the landlord um, not go through the eviction process with you. The last kind of notice that is possible is if you have a lease that's longer than a year, which means even if it's just one day longer than a year, a landlord can give you a 30 day notice. Um, those 30-day notices always get, have the right to cure. So if you have a lease that goes longer than a year, if you don't pay your rent, you get 30 days to pay your rent. And the next time if you violate your lease, you get a cat, you get 30 days to get rid of the cat. The next time you violate your lease, it just keeps going on and on and on like that. So landlords who have entered into leases longer than a year have a much higher um, standard that they have to meet before evicting somebody for any type of violation.